Welcome to Reddit Aliens. Serious, journalists of Reddit, what's the creepiest thing you've ever investigated or encountered? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Little girl died. Her mom had her in a hotel room and shot up with heroin. Tried to give her a bath while she was intoxicated and little girl drowned. I went to the perp walk, bail hearing, to photograph and write up a 300 word article. The little girl's dad was there crying the entire time. He'd been trying to gain full custody. None of that was the creepy part. The creepy part was the mom sitting there in handcuffs. I had shot her photo as she was walking in, but I wasn't allowed my camera in the courtroom, so I was sitting there taking notes. She was smiling. She was on trial for manslaughter, and she couldn't stop smiling. It wasn't a giggly, high type of smiling. It was a sick, dead-eye smile. It was creepy. We covered a case involving a serial killer in our area a few months ago, as I posted in another thread. A guy was arrested after holding someone against their will in an abandoned residence and raping them. Cops finally showed up. When she silently got out of the bed, he forced her to sleep in with him and called police quietly while he was asleep across the room from her. Once he was caught, he confessed to and was prosecuted for a number of other rapes and murders around the area and through several nearby counties. He tortured women he captured for several days with homemade sex devices made from tree branches with condoms wrapped around them before murdering them and dumping the bodies in a secluded location. He received the penalty of death in the county he was tried in and will be entering his next trial in the adjoining county. They don't know how many people he's killed. He doesn't remember where a lot of the remains are. Some of his victims were misidentified as being overdose victims because of their known drug habits. The families had made their peace with knowing their loved ones died from drugs, but this is a new, fresh wound. I can only imagine how painful that must be. The amount of suicides, overdoses, accidental deaths, and missing people that are really homicides would make you squirm. All the profiling we've done on serial killers, whether it's animal cruelty, collecting trophies, physically abusive childhoods, etc. These common traits all come from profiles of serial killers who get caught. We have no earthly idea what the common traits in the profile of a serial killer who doesn't get caught would be like. And frankly, we never will. We can infer they would be organized, have financial security, and contrary to popular belief, they can live normal lives with zero psychiatric history. The higher their income, the more unlikely it is they'll ever be caught. This was a rabbit hole nobody should go down. Shot a story on a woman who was living in her own filth and junk. She piled it up two meters high, a hoarder. I went into her house an hour before she was evicted and she showed me how she lived. I tripped over a kitty's roller skate. It belonged to her son, who was now 40 years old. She didn't only hoard things. She also kept 19 chickens in her bedroom but she kept losing track of them, so for convenience sake, they were kept in a cardboard box that was never cleaned. I've seen some nasty things in my life, but the stench of this house was unbearable. I filmed how she was evicted. She then decided to spend the night in the trash container that the government used to empty her house. The next day, I filmed how she was evicted from a container. Creepy, but also sad. I can't imagine what that place must have smelled like. 19 chickens in a bedroom? I went out to cover a single vehicle crash where an SUV laid sideways with a wooden telephone pole threaded through the driver and passenger side window. The pole was still in the ground, but the top was broken about 30 feet up, apparently where the airborne SUV slammed into it. The driver wasn't wearing her seatbelt and was thrown into the back during the initial crash, so she missed being impelled by the pole as it came through. No serious injuries, amazingly. Military town here did not directly have to write the stories for these, but in a newsroom, you learn them. There have been three plus mass shootings perpetuated by soldiers in this town for a variety of reasons, but those aren't the ones that stuck out in my mind when I saw this question. The one that is haunting is the story about a soldier who by all accounts was a kind, responsible man both inside and outside. He suffered from PTSD after a deployment and was doing everything right, therapy, medication, the works. One day he blacked out from his PTSD and woke up to find out he had shot his neighbors and their dogs to death. He had no recollection of the events or why he did it. It just was. Mental health is no joke. Haven't been a journalist long, only started a year ago, but I've attended some criminal court and coroner's court cases which turned my stomach. 
strap yourselves in, this is going to be long. One example is the 16-year-old girl who jumped in front of a train and killed herself because her stepdad was sexually abusing her. There was another victim in the trial too, who we couldn't identify due to laws around identifying victims of sex crimes. He was found guilty of 13 out of 16 charges, and as the judge read out his sentence, his face was so calm and devoid of any emotion, it was very unsettling to look at him. I interviewed the girl's grandmother outside the courtroom about how they felt about the verdict. Approaching her was horrible because I just knew I was the last person in the world she'd want to talk to. I also attended the inquest into the girl's death, where it was officially ruled a suicide, and the details of her final hours were heartbreaking. Then, there was the case of a 17-year-old boy who was stabbed to death on his best friend's doorstep. I never saw the autopsy pictures, but I was sat across from the jury as they looked through them and half of the jury looked like they wanted to cry. There were five teenagers up for this murder, and in the end, they were all found guilty of murder. It was probably gang motivated. During the trial, a couple of the defendants laughed and joked with each other in the dock, which was so bizarre to witness because I don't know if they truly understood what a serious situation they were in. Then, there was the case at a coroner's court, which still upsets me if I think about it in too much detail. The woman was found dead in the bath by her husband after she'd taken an unknown amount of drugs. She fell unconscious while the hot water was still running, and she was found hours later, so the blistering, boiling water completely ruined her body, and the coroner went into graphic detail. So graphic, one of her adult children ran out of the courtroom, sobbing. I'll spare you the details. In the end, an open verdict was ruled because the coroner couldn't say with 100% certainty that she intended to take her own life. Afterwards, the family were arguing with the police liaison about whether she should have been prescribed the drug she was given and presumably took. And while I'm a little ashamed to say it, I couldn't bring myself to approach the family and ask if they wanted to write a tribute for their mother, as is protocol when covering inquests at my company. They were all so distraught, and I couldn't handle the idea of being turned on me. Thankfully, my editor was sympathetic. Those were some heavy subject matters covered, but I'd be lying if I didn't say the last sentence made me chuckle a little bit inside. Sorry, just true covered a trial of a man who beat his one-year-old child to death. He was scary. His family started following me around town making threats for about a month. Busted a puppy mill. I hate dogs, but these things had never seen the outside of a cage, much less sunlight. Woman was selling them for $2,000 as hand-raised Yorkies. I typically never get involved with stuff like this, but her punishment was so light, I called every dog selling website I could find, sent them the story, and blackballed her from all of them. So much child abuse and kitty porn. Why the F do people like doing that shit so much? Wrote about a case of animal abuse by a worker at a dairy farm. The guy's main job was to care for the newborn baby calves. They get bottle fed and are usually born toothless. Well, after the bottle was empty, he would stick his penis in their mouths for a quick BJ. He was probably doing it for years. He disappeared before his trial. But I so wanted them to bring the cow into the courtroom. One day, we got a story about an Amber Alert, a pregnant mom and her two daughters go missing. Day two, we interview the dad outside their house. Day three, police are still searching and we were doing a story on how the whole community is helping find the missing family members. Night of day three, the police arrest the dad. Turns out he allegedly, still ongoing, killed them and dumped their bodies in the oil field he worked at. They recovered the bodies a few days later. The creepiest part is he gave a lengthy interview and talked about how he hopes they're safe and come home soon. Extra creepy factor, dad was having an affair with a co-worker who had a history of dating criminals. This was about a week after a kid went missing. Police searched the house, found nothing. Police felt like something wasn't right so they came back. They found his body hidden. His cousin accidentally killed him while she was trying to make him leave her room. Yeah, working in the news is not as fun as people think. Once I was taking notes on a dangerous offender hearing, which is basically the government arguing that the person shouldn't ever be released for the good of society. The testifying psychologist basically just went down a laundry list of psychopathic traits and marked them down one by one. Sexual deviance, problems with non-romantic relationships, escalation of sexual violence. That was basically what it was like the whole time I was there. I was sitting only a few meters away from the guy. He looked almost bored with the whole hearing just had his feet crossed, reading along with the proceedings. 
One of the people I was there with said they felt like they had to take a shower, like they were that disturbed. I personally wasn't that bothered, but it was still unnerving being that close to the guy. I worked for a local paper for a while. I had a story that would have been the pinnacle of my career if it didn't get squashed. One day, a former co-worker told me he heard about the local college's women's golf coach having molested a girl. Give me the name of the coach. Within a half hour of my pounding the pavement at the school, I got pulled into the head of athletics office who gave me the name of the girl. She was in the running to be state champion in her division. By the next day, I've contacted her and met her at Starbucks where she told me everything on tape, confirming what I'd heard and more. I encouraged her to go to the police and she said it was okay if I used her name in the article wrote the article, sent it to my editor. The media relations guy for the school contacted my boss, asking if it was true, because he'd gotten wind of it. He'd been out of the office, and his assistant gave me a no comment. Unfortunately, the evidence against the coach was solid. We published the article online. It quickly becomes our third most viewed for the year, but within a day, the coach has resigned. He's filed suit against the paper and gotten the local masons sending death threats to my boss. Someone left a dead raccoon on his porch. My boss brokered a deal with the coach to pull the article and disavow all knowledge of it if he dropped the suit and called off the Masons. Last I heard, the coach was getting divorced and moved out of state. I quit after that. Some scary people out there. How do you think the victim would feel in this situation? Shouldn't the police have helped the journalists involved? Terrible. Covering a story on a military base as a stringer for a small town newspaper a couple towns over. The base is one of the largest depots in the region of the country and has many missiles. Security was pretty lax. They initially didn't even think I was on the list. When they did, they asked me for my press badge and no other ID. They did a search of my vehicle and it was far from extensive. My point is, there are serious holes here. This newspaper is desperate for writers, so nearly anyone that can string words together can do freelance work with them. The press badge isn't anything you can't just construct from basic supplies from Walmart anyway. Once you're on the base, you can drive anywhere without guidance. I doubt higher security is really needed, but if someone wanted to do some damage, they could with some planning and patience.